I went fishing this week and I parked on grass. Unfortunately, we've had a lot of rain recently. When I got back to the car, loaded it with the fishing gear and I couldn't get off. The wheels were just turning and the mud had all churned up and I was stuck. So I went looking for someone to try and help me. I saw two men walking a dog, big, strong men. And I said to them, could you do me a favour? It'll only take a few seconds. I'm stuck on mud. I'd already tried to push the car and I could feel it rocking. I just needed someone to put the car into gear, into reverse, and then I could just push it back onto the road. And I could see they didn't want to help me. So in the end, I said to them, it's okay, I'll look for someone else. Then I saw an angler driving down with gear in his car. And I said, stopped him and said, could you help me? I'm stuck on the grass. All I need is just a few seconds of your time. Sit in the car, put it into reverse, nice and gently, and I'll push it out. It won't take any time at all. And he was umming and ahhing, and I said, it's okay, I'll ask someone else. And he said, okay, I'll help you. And I said, right, I'm just up there, just 30 seconds away, I'll meet you there. And as I passed his vehicle and started to walk, he put his foot down and sped off the other way to escape so that he didn't have to help me. By now it's dark and I'm just sitting there on a fence thinking, no one will help me. But do you know what? And this is the important message. I'm thinking to myself, it makes me even more want to help other people. Because some folks in that situation could think to themselves, I've asked three people, not one would even give me a few seconds of their time. That's it. I'm finished with people. I'm going to live my own life for me from now on. <clears throat> but actually, I thought the opposite. I was thinking it shows just how much people need us sometimes and you can help them. And I've been keeping my wife updated because it was Valentine's night after all. And I did say to her, I'm stuck, but I'm hoping to get out soon. I telephoned her and said, I asked three people, no one will help me. And she said to me, doesn't it make you want to help others even more? And I said, that's exactly what I was just thinking. Anyway, I'm there and as a Christian, I pray. And I pray for God to help me and send someone along, even when it looks like I've exhausted the opportunities. Cutting a long story short, someone came, helped me and got out of the mess that I was in. So I was very thankful at that help. And I think that for all of us, whenever we see someone in distress, someone that needs help, someone that is in a situation whereby we can help them out of it. We need to do that. I was thinking of the parable of the Good Samaritan. You may not be familiar with that, but a man, he's on his way from Jerusalem to Jericho. Jesus told the story and he was robbed and beaten and lying by the side of the road. And the religious people came along, the priest, the people that you would think, for example, that would help him. And they looked and crossed over and carried on their journey. And then the Samaritan came. And at that time, the Samaritan or the Samaritans were despised by the Jewish people. They were outcasts. No one wanted to be associated with a Samaritan. But the Samaritan, who became known as the Good Samaritan for the parable, stopped picked the man up, put him on his donkey, took him off to an inn and paid the owner money to look after him. There's a lot of inspiration there, isn't there? In my story, which is a, a version, the modern day version of the Good Samaritan, 
and the original. Always look to help people, to do good, to be kind. And I'm a great believer that what we sow will always be what we reap as well. People say what goes around comes around. If you're not interested in helping other people, people won't help you. But if you sow seeds of kindness into other people's lives, it has a remarkable way of coming back and being there just when you need it.